the stuff like, you know, gay marriage, number one, that if you look at the trends on Christians' views on that changing over time, they've definitely changed. And that's one of those definite kosher changes or, you know, being kosherized. I don't know if that's a word. No, it's but, not. Uh, it's it's not, not a word. And I think, it, you know, that's, become Christian. you know, secularly first, that became an accepted idea. And then Christians are more and more being pressured or shamed into adopting that secular idea. And I'm sure as we continue onward, that's just going to not, that's not going to change. I think it's, it's just going to be a continual trend. Well, Rolo yeah. talks about so, like even so let's pornography. Take, let's take some of these Christian right here. Kosher. So homosexuality, right? That is what we would call black and white issue in the Bible. We know the way the Lord receives this. We know it's a perversion of sexuality. We know that it's there's no caveat for it being acceptable, right? So you drew up some statistics we saw. And so it took several denominations and talked about how they'd grown. And it's really kind of mind-blowing because the pressure that culture puts on church is a real thing. And we become, Why is it a real thing? It's because churches are businesses now, and they need to have people in the door. And if they don't acquiesce to, to certain cultural like <clears throat> mo- themes like that, are they won't get no, people in the door. The They're revenue. just going to have empty seats. Yep. But the people they are getting in the door they have to stay are not getting the truth. Yeah, and that I mean that's the whole well, there's statement. Yeah. That's the whole statement of like uh, Francis Chan saying the church is designed to fill seats rather than create disciples, and that's a great example of that. If you're if you're bending the knee of culture to keep the seats filled, you're not doing rather it. than tre- uh, teaching truth. It's not a doing? numbers game. Yeah, ultimately, it's not a numbers game. Yeah, when Jesus said to the disciples, "You're gonna have to eat my flesh and drink my blood." They were like, I'm getting out of here. This guy has just walked into crazy land, and I'm not going with him. But you know what? He, Jesus was speaking truth, so the ones who stayed were the ones that were important. It was about numbers. Yeah. yeah. So just uh, yeah, the numbers I brought, this is from Pew Research. So um, it's from an article from 2015, and it has, the da- has data on 2007 to 2014 as far as religious views uh, mm-hmm. changing on homosexuality by basically denomination. So oh, no religious group. 2014? Uh, 2007 to 2014. Wow. So I'm sure now, now it's yeah. much different. So, for example, like, uh, so this, this is percent saying homosexuality, homosexuality should be accepted by society. Catholics went from 58% to 70%. Um, mainline Protestant went from 56 to 66. Uh, Orthodox Christian, 48 to 62. Um, all just all Christians in general, it shows 44 to 54. So, on the whole, and actually, more Mormons are way, yeah, Mormons and Jehovah Witness held str- held more strong because they're down twenty four percent to thirty six, and then twelve to sixteen percent Jehovah Witness. So it's that fear base. It's like ten percent. Like fear. you're looking in a seven year span, you got to come a ten percent shift in, and actually that went from a shift of minority supporting now the majority does. Um, yeah, at least this. So you know. Where are we at now? <laughs> so when you look yeah. at a statistic that says 65% of Americans are Christians, what are we going to say now? Yeah. Well, it's like the, they the, these are big hot topics. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like sexuality is the hottest topic right and now. And you got whole you know what what I mean? new denominations of Christianity trying to just like completely justify all this stuff. The church right across the street from my oh, house. Man. do. And it's They're like flying those rainbow the one thing every the, day. I'm re- like, I think it's like homosexuality is one sin. Mm-hmm. I there's plenty of other sins, gluttony, greed. I mean, this the list goes on. But they sensationalize these particular sins, and then they say these are the people who are allowed in church and are not allowed in church. When that's not what it's about, because a lot of the times, if you do have a problem with sin, everyone does. You should still feel comfortable going to church. Well, it's, it's, that's it's the sh- point. It's like you shouldn't feel like oh, I'm not is, allowed okay, in church okay, okay, because so gluttony, I have to deal with this. Is sin. These other issues are sin. We recognize it as sin. The difference is if I was to say gluttony isn't sin anymore. Yeah, it's, okay. It's, well, it's not a it's hot not, topic, not, dude. The bro- reason why it's a hot topic is not because the church made it one. It's because the whole world is fixated on it and addicted to talking about what is gay, who is gay, now all the, the pronouns and all this other stuff. is just like crazy, man. It's been going on for like two decades, three the, decades. I don't, yeah, I don't view the problem as... It's it's the it's turning something that's not sin into or I mean that was sin into not sin. I think it's that's like the where definition the definition of, of of deceiving. Yeah, it's that's like exactly because if is. they were doing that with another thing, let's just say they you know because there's plenty of Christians in church living together, they're not supposed to be doing that. Well, 
it's not that they can't come to church, but the, if you the mean church like couples, like yeah. unmarried, yeah, like unmarried gotcha. couples. Sorry, cohabitation. So yeah, so if they if the church was like, okay, this is no longer a sin, that's just that's in the same boat of mm-hmm. problem. Right? Yeah, well, the Bible tells us this is the church. This is the way it's going to look. And so mm-hmm. we, I mean, a lot of people look at this, and uh, it's going to be a digression. But you know, a lot of times it is what we're in for, and it doesn't mean that you just stand by and like, oh, the Bible told me it was going to get worse, and here we are, it's getting worse. But what do we do to combat it means understanding what's actually going on. Are we being manipulated? It's like a popularity context. You know, and I it's look business, at the kids. That's why. Well, business is always marketing all this. You know, it's attraction. It's working the human tendencies of, you know, against themselves so that they do something they may not want to do. And it's like, what strategy did God give us? You know, in many ways, dealing with persecution is the strategy he gave us. Mm-hmm. And it sucks. You know, a lot of times you're going to have to undergo pain and suffering. The and church should expect rejection. to have major pushback. You should. You know, yeah. it's not about like, oh. it's all about them saying you're wrong, you're messed up. It's saying it's the inversion of the message we're supposed to give them. You're not accepting. You're not loving. You don't like the gay people. You want all the gay people to die. It's like, I didn't say that. I didn't say any of that. I actually love them. Because I love them, I want them to leave their life of sin. You know, and then you have to say that, mm-hmm. and it doesn't matter. They're already walking away by that yeah. point. But the church itself has fallen prey to the popular thing. Like Joe said, it's a business. Yes, businesses don't always have to operate the same way that, say, my, mm-hmm. or not my, but Facebook, these social media giants that go out and take advantage of people's natural inclinations and they they really use it against them and then we're like oh what are we going to do you know oh wow their tools are so good let's go use some of their tools because we're going to fill seats right and so that's what we're talking about but the christian kosher issue of like what are some of the real because because the culture within church is going to evolve right like dancing singing people are going to be doing flag stuff in church maybe 30 years ago you were a saint worshiper if you did that Mm mm-hmm Nowadays, it's like, okay, yeah, you want to express yourself? Go beat on your tambourine. Be like naked David hanging out. You know, you got that much passion? Cool. We're not going to judge you. You're the happy, joyous person. Maybe we can get a little bit of yours. But as far as the gay thing, um, being able to exercise our Christianity in the Western church in a way that's staying true to our faith, um, that's when Christian kosher steps over the line. It's not just, what would it be? It's just, it's just leave a, it's a digression from our faith. We're, we're leaving our faith completely. Well, you, you have know? to. So like this progressive con- Christianity, mm-hmm. right? In this country, we divided church from state because a church ends up and did for let's get this straight. I mean, for like fifteen hundred years or more, the church was was a powerhouse politically and um, did a lot of terrible, terrible, terrible stuff. So we because they were enthralled in stuff they shouldn't have been. And it just ends up happening, whether it's a political issue, which which if you think about it, the sexist movement, the, the, it's, it's a political issue. A lot of this stuff is straight up politics, and a lot of pastors feel like they have to weigh in on a lot of these topics because the congregation is dealing with this stuff all week long, you know? And it's like, maybe I should say something about this, or maybe we should take a stance on this, and we have to have, we have, to have a stance. And, and um, stance is good. It's one of those things that's like, it makes the whole tribal thing come to life, and then you got sides, and then you got this competition going on. When it's like we need to just focus on 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 core principles here, and then really put people in their own driving seats. But people don't like that. They don't like that. They want the inspirational stuff. They want to feel good, and they want to get that like you know motivation going, and to feel like they have a position, right? Because it feels bad to be, um, what, what is. It? Persecuted, a, wrong. No, uh, Jordan Peterson talks about this. So does Ian McGillcrest. It's like in between chaos and order, pretty much. It's where it's you're having an open mind. You could say that, you know, and and have and trying to pass <clears throat> pass a, pass your own judgment on it. Let the Holy Spirit work within your life on it. Be more of a have. Let your relationship with Christ actually be something that is a true thing in your life, where it's guiding you, not necessarily your pastor guiding you through every subject politically or. With your family, you're the head of the, your family. You you're actually a fellowship with people. It's working in your life, and and putting more faith and 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 focus on that instead of letting churches become these overblown businesses where they're eating up like you're talking about Facebook and sort of like just using these, all the world. They're they're taxes. just internalizing anything they can do to get people in the door to take care of current issues. When 
that's not what the what what the church is about. I think it's just a it's a, and and that's what happens when you end up going too far mm. kosher with stuff. It's I'd like, like to say that kosher progressive Christian. Like I wish we would just name stuff the way it should be named. It's not progressive Christianity. It's degressive <laughs> Christianity. It should be named that. Like it sounds so good to somebody on the per- progressive. It sounds good. We're we'll getting somewhere as, here. Let's go into a new religion. New I don't want to even put the name Christianity on it, Roll right? Of, but it, but that's what we name it. It's Roll so of, annoying. And I would say, that. I would say another thing is these two bodies of kosher, right? There's the way that it could actually benefit the church. Like uh, if I was in a church in the 1930s, like we just brought up Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Joe told me to watch. You guys should watch this. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, amazing figure in Germany. He was a priest, uh, saved a lot of Jews, ended up dying for it, and uh, incredible person. Credible heart, very smart, wrote a book called The Cost of Discipleship. I encourage you all to read it. Great. Anyway, uh, Amazon has a wonderful like movie about this guy's last life. You know, everything he did in his last part of his life. And in the beginning, it shows him in the American church. This is part of his story I didn't know. And he's with in this black church, right? And everybody's dancing, singing, and you just see like this German pudgy guy with this like happy face. Like, I've never seen this before. This is great. I like this. Let's try and do this. He's singing these goofy songs with his friends. And because the Germans are more austere, they're more like, uh, you know, they have this Germanness about them, which a lot of Europe actually has. The, the Russians, it's, it's there. It's happening there. And there's a reason for it. You know, you have the old church, all this posterity there, and it's rigid, you know. So anyway, he loved it. And so if I was in that church or in the back in those days, and I wanted to express my joy, my peace in a physical way, in those churches during that time, they'd judge you for it. They'd be like, you're being immodest, you're, you're being uh, sort of, uh, you're, you're being, you're not being respectful even. You could, they Maybe could say you're, you're being sensual. You're being sensual. You're, I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a bundle of things they could throw at you just for wanting to express that, right? And so now that the church has kind of made it kosher, I mean, that little move to say we can express ourselves in a bodily way, we can dance. We can express through shouts of joy, these different things. Even we see prevalent in the Psalms in the Old Testament, we see figures well, doing this. I think that that's a version of Christian kosher, even though it's not the same kind of black and white like your list is, mm-hmm. that, I, that I'm that i happy to see. That's kind of like the church saying, well, this is our legalism that we're getting over, throwing that shiza down Yeah, well, I'd almost see that shouldn't even be an like, issue, because number one, it's not like, it's not outlawed in the bible and you but see david doing do it. that right yeah. and so then that becomes the church yeah it's not outlawed but it makes people uncomfortable yeah <laughs> and so they're like okay yeah gotta tell old billy he got too excited you yeah. know tell him everybody tells him and then the next thing you know he's not expressing himself and doesn't feel like himself in church and that's sad and that happens so often to people because everybody's made uniquely and wonderfully different <clears throat> you know if we're not ready to accept those people in our church and the church is going to be a, a really lame place. Mm-hmm. It's going to be boring. Everybody's going to be doing the same thing. It's like, no one wants to do that. 